All right, I gotta talk about something here that'll pretty much change your life. While I'm saying, doing this video, I'm playing with the focus on my phone, brand new iPhone 13. So getting back in the game here at under 10, we gotta talk about something that's been around longer than I even know, and that would be the leaf spring. If you think about leaf springs, covered wagons had leaf springs. And here we are, here we are, However many years exactly when a covered wagon stopped being used, I don't know. But here we are in modern times, we'll call it. This is a 2001 Ford. We're still using covered wagon suspensions on our trucks. And I, I, I can already hear the, the Dodge and Chevy guys. Ha, 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 ha. Well, you got your own sets of problems. Leaf springs are by far stronger and even Ford switched over to the coil spring type setup essentially the same body style I believe it was 03 04 05 whatever when they switched but the older Fords they still had the leaf spring front ends and I think without doing too much research I think these were the last trucks you could get with the covered wagon suspension back and front and what I'm showing you here should shut this radio off what I'm showing you here is something that's going to change your life. Leaf springs have not gotten any further technology since the covered wagon, or you could even go as far to say like caveman days. I just saw, I just saw an ad for a really old car that had the leaf springs going the other way with a, with a cross member. And it was like a double leaf spring thing, but it's essentially did the same thing. You got, it's tied to the axle and then tied to the frame. There's been no other mechanical improvements to make the ride softer until now these guys came along. This is called a Celastic Shackle. Celastic. Can you see the whole shape of it here? Mounting up at the frame, running down here where it pivots, and it, it, I'm, I'm doing it opposite. I should go on the other side. It essentially is like a duck's bill. It mounts to the spring down here, and it provides like a torsion ride in the shackle itself. So it's essentially a spring on a spring. Now, the leaf spring, pretty much the way it's configured, it's easier to see in the back, so I'm going back here, pretty much can only go up and down. So now when you add the shackle, this is a Celastic shackle on the back. You can see the rubbered in area where the torsion spring, I'm assuming it's a torsion spring, that's where that's all hidden. It now acts as a secondary spring. When you put the elastic shackles in the front, you are, and then take a drive on the same roads that you're used, commonly used to, you are not gonna think you're in the same truck. Put them on the front first, and you're, you're literally not gonna believe it. My opinion, you don't need them on the back. And yes, I read all the, the ads, or the I mean the reviews on these shackles prior to myself buying them. Before putting them on the back and front, I read everything, and a ton of people said they don't work. I don't think they work for shit on the back. They work absolutely amazing on the front of a, of a leaf spring front suspension. And now with basically every truck being some other type of suspension, other than leaf springs in the front, I don't know what what service life or what uh, what uh, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say I don't know how much longer these things are actually going to be around. So if you've got a leaf sprung truck and you want a crazy soft, smooth, amazing ride, you better get the ones for the front soon. That being said, I I don't understand why there's not a competitor to Celastic Shackles because. Reviews don't lie, and if you look at the other reviews, and what I'm about to tell you, my own review here, I don't think they're high, the highest quality made for paying $420 for a pair. So at the time when I bought them in 2020 COVID time, it was $840 for a set, and now I want to say it was like five something for a pair. So now you're paying $1,000 front and back, and unless you have it just being a daily driver, it with no loads or anything because I see no point in over in putting a ton of weight on a suspension and then trying to make it more suspensiony soft. 
just leave your factory rear end alone. Unless you've got a daily driver, you just go tool around in and you're on rough roads, leave the back ones off. So, but you're still talking a $500 upgrade. You're not gonna believe it till you feel it. You will, you'll watch this video and you, you'll probably take another two years before you even buy it or think about it. Till one day maybe you'll, maybe you'll get in a truck that has one and try it. You're not gonna, you just, you're not gonna believe it. You won't believe it. You won't even believe me saying this in this video how amazing and smooth the ride is. It, it takes this covered wagon style suspension and turns it into a plusher ride than the more modern trucks with the coil springs. This coil spring set up Ford with the, with the arms on it, not the coil springs. This is much worse of a ride now than this with the Celastics. And I think, I think there's room for competition with Celastic because Celastic is just such a dumb name. Like, would you buy, would you buy a cheeseburger and fries if McDonald's changed their name to Celastic? Would you go to Celastic for a cheeseburger and fries? No, you go to McDonald's. I think if they called themselves Suspen suspension USA or something suspension USA leaf, leaf spring leaf spring dampener so anything but now I think they'd sell more and I think there's room for a competitor in this because what I'm about to say next is my experience my experience from the get-go if you got the expendable money these are an absolute buy 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 I can't tell you, I'm gonna have to look at my old photos. I can't tell you now where they sat before, but you can see they're now sitting, the, the shackle is sitting on the frame. I don't think that's right. I think that's crap. I think something wore out now in the shackle a little bit. I don't recall the body of the shackle sitting on the frame. I just gotta look back at old pictures. I don't wanna say yes or no, but I don't think it did. These on the front, you can get a two inch riser. So it, it gives you your Ford leveling kit everyone, everyone's always after. I've never been a big fan of the stupid leveling kits because all it does is make your front suspension rougher when they add the extra leaf to jack up the front end to match the rake in the back. And that rake in the back is there to level out when you put a big load on it because surprise surprise some trucks are used for work and made from the factory to work they're not just pavement princesses like so many teenagers think these trucks are for but yeah so recap if you got the expendable money time whatever you do a lot of rougher driving on roads with a leaf sprung front truck leaf sprung front end truck you are going to be blown away you will not believe it till you try it for yourself you're going to be blown away month after month after month. You're going to say, how in the hell is it that smooth? And then you're going to jump in your buddy's truck with the coil springs. And you're going to say, mine's better. But I think there's room for a competitor. I think there's room for improvement. I don't think on a work truck you should ever put them on the back. And yeah, I'm going to just have to end this one here because we're already 845. Under 10 out. I guess if you got any other questions, I'm going to do my best now on my new phone to answer comments. Thanks.